Hey everybody, Friday night and I'm finally back out here in the Montana garage working on some of my junk. Uh, next order of business is disassembly of the front end of the 55 chassis. I got the rear end uh, mostly or all tore apart. And so now we got to work on the front end. Where's that over there? There it is. Got to get the A-arm springs, all that sort of stuff off. Uh, so let's flip this around and see what we're dealing with. All right, so here's the chassis as it sits right now. As I said, I got the rear of it all torn apart. Nothing there. Started kind of wire wheeling it, and I don't know. Not sure if that was gonna do the trick, so I went down to Harbor Freight and purchased one of their kind of cheap sandblasters. I've seen some Mixed reviews, do, do they work, do they not work? Is it gonna be more of a hassle than it's worth? But it wasn't that expensive, so I figured I'd give it a try. Still haven't even opened the box yet, but we'll uh, get to that here in a little bit. Uh, back to the chassis though, time to tear apart the front end. Gotta get the A-arms and springs and all that stuff all apart. Um, I started kind of messing with it earlier today and I don't have a spring compressor, so I was trying to find a way to get this apart without dying with the spring coming out at me. I don't know. Um, I took them apart years ago, and I think I used, if I remember right, I used like a come along cable and just wrapped it around there somehow. And that seemed to work. I tried to kind of rig up something like that today and that didn't seem like it was working very well um, so then I know you can also I've never done it this way but I've seen it done where you take it loose at the upper a-arm there loosen this nut but don't break it free you see I got the jack underneath here the theory is you break that free um, the jack holds it in place and then you just let the jack down to release the spring ten tension. The worry with that is with the bare frame, I'm worried that instead of the jack and the lower arm going down, it's just gonna lift up on the frame. So then I decided, well, I'll chain it to the jack. And that holds it a little better, but it still doesn't take a lot. I can lift that uh, end of the frame up pretty easily. So I was just getting ready to maybe go for it and bust loose that ball joint and see what happened but I don't know I was a little sketched out by it even though and then I even look, I stuck a cable through the spring come along dit to the frame so if it went flying out of there at least it wouldn't go too far but I don't know safety third I guess maybe safety a little closer to first on this I decided to not risk it did a little research and I found a way to make a spring compressor and it really doesn't look that hard so i got a little bag of bolts and washers and a piece of all thread and i'm going to use some metal that little flat piece of metal there off my old shock bar so i got to cut that out of there and we're going to see if that's going to make it a little safer so i guess first order of business create a spring compressor Alright, I guess I need two feet of all thread, so I've got a little mark on this bad boy. Buzz this off of here real quick somehow. Get a nut on there. All right, good enough. Let's 
All right, I need a little metal plate for the bottom of the spring compressor. So I'm gonna cut it out of this shock bar that I had on the back of the car. Put my ear protection in. Shield down. So I just thought of something. I have to drill two more holes in this little piece of flat metal here before or to be able to use it for the spring compressor. So I think it's going to be easier for me to drill those holes before I cut it out of this thing so I got some way to hold on to it. So I'm going to do that first. So that's going to be the center. Got to go find a tape measure. All right, progress on the homemade spring compressor. Got a flashlight here so we can see that a little better. I made a little plate to mount where the shock usually mounts underneath the lower A-arm, I guess it is. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of all thread and it's gonna go down through the top shock hole and use some washers and some nuts and squeeze that all together so we can then supposedly safely remove the A-arm bolts and then use the all thread and the nuts to release the tension from the spring safely. So we'll see what happens next. All right, here's another look with the homemade spring compressor in place it's just a piece of about a two foot long chunk of half inch all thread the nut and a couple washers here at the top i saw another version of this this is not my idea by any means i found it just from the good old google machine um, there's another version where they put a bearing in there because i guess once the spring tension gets on there it makes it a little hard to turn but uh, another post i said i saw just Said to put a little grease between the washers. So there's two washers there, and I guess that allows it to spin a little bit with the tension on there. So that's tightened up on top, and then obviously it goes down through the spring where the shock would have mounted. And there's a couple ways to make the bottom side too. One version kind of used the the bottom of a, an old shock and some a coupler kind of to hook that to the all thread. But um, I just went with the metal plate that I cut and bolted to where the shock used to mount using the shock bolts that bolt the shock there and then obviously the hole through it and a nut and a washer on each side. So in theory, that's supposed to hold the spring tension while I bust loose the ball joints and I guess take the lower control arm bolts loose. And then you loosen the nut on the all thread until the spring tension goes away. Guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so a quick overview of what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to remove this uh, front end assembly, the A-arms, spindle, spring, etc. So I've made this spring compressor. It's uh, bolted into the bottom of the A-arm. I've removed the cotter pin and loosened the castle nuts on the ball joints, I guess is where they're at. Uh, I have a little bit of tension on the spring compressor. Next I'm going to, or I'm, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to loosen the four bolts on this lower A-arm. I'm not going to remove them, but I'm going to loosen them down quite a bit. Then I'm going to bust loose the ball joint with the pickle fork 
And then once that falls out of there, uh, the spring should remain compressed or the, the, the all thread here should, you know, take up the spring so it doesn't fly out of there. And then I will loosen the rest of the way or I'll take the nuts off these bolts and then this whole A-arm, it's not going to like open up, drop down, it's going to drop, kind of, we have to drop it straight down by loosening the tension on the homemade spring compressor. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. I'm kind of jammed in the corner here. I don't have a lot of room. I would set up a little tripod and try to film it, but I'm just going to do it and then I'll bring you back and show you how it worked out if uh, I survived the whole ordeal. Let's hope. Well, the good news is it looks like this spring compressor is holding the tension. Halfway there and nobody's died yet. Success! Got it all tore apart. I wasn't even scared. All right, maybe just a little. All right, Saturday morning, and I'm gonna try and take the other side apart. I got, uh, I guess, passenger side taken apart yesterday. So here's a little better look at the bottom of the homemade spring compressor, how it mounts onto the A-arm. This is obviously upside down. This is the lower A-arm. And then the spring compressor goes through the A-arm, up through where the shock is, mounts at the top, and then that allows you to hold the spring tension and take it all apart. So, Trey's trying to get the lower bottom, or the lower ball joint out of that one. I'm probably going to reuse the A-arms just because I'm cheap and don't have money to buy new ones. And maybe we'll get new ones, but we're going to take that apart just in case. And then all of that, the brakes and spindle is all going to go away. We'll get all new stuff for there. So he's working on that, and I'll start destroying this side. All right, so the spring compressor goes back down through the shock hole. The nut for the bottom won't quite fit through the hole, so you got to put it in there and then find a way to fish the nut on through the spring. you got plenty of room. So we're so okay. There was another version of this where you used the grafted, like, the bottom of a shock on there, but uh, this seems a lot easier to me. Just tightened it up enough to where I got some room to stick through there. I guess this is the trickier part getting the washer on it. And then get it back down through the hole. Another nut and washer. And then we'll tighten that up. And then we'll tighten the top one up until you take the pressure off the spring. So that's how that works. All right, that's good. All right, so I busted the ball joint loose with the pickle fork, and then I took these four nuts off, the bolts that hold the lower A-arm in, and now I'm slowly releasing the tension from the spring compressor tool. Just hold that.
55 Chevy chassis completely disassembled. We got quite a disaster in here to deal with. Look at all these parts and grease and dirt. Shit laying everywhere. So get all this cleaned up. Got some massive amounts of dirt, grease, oil. Scrape off that side of the frame. I've started cleaning this side up. And then we'll attack it with the old Harbor Freight sandblaster and see how that works. We'll let you know. Huh, Trey? I mean, it's Harbor Freight, so I don't know what to expect. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, we got most of the mess cleaned up. Now we're making more. Had a significant amount of grease and dirt and oil caked on this side of the frame. Apparently there was a massive oil leak at some point on this side. Holy crap. At least the frame rail's not going to be rusted. How's it coming off of there, Trey? It's not. It's not? I think, well, I mean, something's coming off. Look at all that pile. So we're just getting this last little bit scraped up a little bit. And then we're going to move her outside. Because we're trying to bring that box inside because I thought I was rebuilding my 55 but now apparently what are we doing painting my truck oh now we got to paint the square body and so we'll see how that goes so hopefully we'll see some of that